What up, everyone? It is I, the Comic Outlaw, <laughs> coming to you from parts unknown, sailing around that little slice of heaven that you know I'll be keeping. Now, as you can tell if you watch my show, I love movies, and I'm I have partial '80s movies myself. There's something about the genre, the the way things were shot, especially the horror movies. Now, if you've seen any of my videos and lack of subscribers, probably some of you haven't, I've always seen horror movies as the movie about the villain. Simply, it's just a villain horror movie. A horror movie is just a movie about a villain that wins more often than not, or it keeps coming back. Now, originally, and I'm sorry for this taking a, a little bit of time, but uh, originally this was going to be a <laughs> top 10 but as you could tell uh, it took a little longer than that and it'll be in a top 20 that's right I said 20 20 horror movies yes from the 80s that your boy Jack Slater is going to be going over right now so are you ready are you ready indeed now I like to give a shout out to um, boys on Twitter, Twelve, 12 Nights of Horror, for giving me this little idea. Although it started out something smaller and grew into something more grandiose, like I was saying before. So uh, let's get started, huh? <laughs> uh, well, I decided to include funniest horror movies, whatever stuck my fancy back then. And of course, this is my list. So if you got any ideas or anything else that you think ought to be in, in it or, you know, get your own show. All right, number 20, The Toxic Avenger. This 1984 Tromoville classic. <laughs> it's the one that uh, gave them their little bit of fame, you could say. Back then they were just making uh, kind of nudie movies. And then it became nudie, gross horror movies with all out dick punches and explosions. Oh, whew. a little ballerina boy gets thrown in some toxic waste by some bullies and turns into a big, heaping, hulking monster that just loves to rip people apart. <laughs> I mean, this did it for trauma. They started making horrors after this goofy, fun, loving horror. But, you know, it, it is what it is. You know, number 19. I'm going to have to say The Blob, the 88 version. Now, The Blob was an interesting movie. It was very well done. Um, of course, there was an older version of it back in the olden days of uh, horror. The golden age. Or I guess silver, you could say. But anyways, The Blob was a very fair movie. I, I thought it was good. It stuck really well to the premise. I liked the big gelatinous cube thing just sliming and oozing through things and just melting people to hell. Oh, it's all in good fun. <laughs> And uh, this next one, I, I bet some of you kids out there haven't heard of. And it's a sequel. Some of these are going to be sequels. So I'm going to tell you that right now. Because I just thought, you know, some of them were better than sequels. And some of them came out in the 70s. And the one in the 80s kind of made the series. So let's stay on point here. There was a movie called House. And they made one called House 2. Now, none of the movies have anything to do with anything else. They're those movies that you can watch separately. House 2 is a mixed bag of just fun, romp goodness. I mean, this guy loses his parents. They die when he's a baby at a house. He goes back to it. He ends up finding this crystal skull by digging up his grandfather's corpse. His grandfather's corpse comes alive. They must stop this other guy from taking the skull. It, like I said, it has a little bit of everything. And it's just fun to watch. <laughs> to watch someone in their great 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 grand descendant zombie get drunk and hit out night on the town <laughs> it's just one of those weird 80s movies that just surprises the hell out of you every time and speaking of one of those odd 80s movies I have to uh, go with killer clowns from outer space man hmm this movie came out in 88 it was just one of those fun horror movie comedies about alien clowns that come down wrap people up in cotton candy and suck their blood like vampires through straws twisty straws as a matter of fact uh, it's a 
it's a very funny movie. I mean, a lot of these movies weren't supposed to be taken so seriously like everything is now. A lot of horror movies are up their own asses with how serious they can be. And I think they, they kind of take a little fun out of it. And Killer Clowns just gives you that fun, fun, fun rump. You know, and plus the music. Din, 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 din. I highly recommend looking that song up on YouTube, Killer Clowns from Outer Space. It's just as fun as the movie. I'll give a shout out to uh, one of my favorite bands here. Now, uh, <laughs> Insane Clown Posse, Killer Clowns, if you get my drift. Now, moving on. Here's another movie from 87, The Lost Boys. Now, I'm... Your boy's not the biggest vampire fan. Bam Stroker's Dracula was a decent movie. Uh, there's been a few movies here and there, but the newer vampire, glitter vampire thing just ruined it. And I I thought The Lost Boys was different. It was original. It had uh, the Corys in it, of course. Uh, had Keith or Sutherland. It was a great movie. It, and again, it's one of those movies where it was scary, but it was fun. And plus, they threw a vampire in a tub full of garlic and holy water. It was freaking hilarious. I mean, literally, just to see Bill from Bill and Ted go, fucking amazing, man. Amazing. Another movie I highly recommend. Now, number 15. And uh, I know some people are going to disagree on me uh, about this because it's so low on the list, but I don't give a damn. Hellraiser. Yeah, I said it. I said it. 15 is Hellraiser. And I'm going to tell you why. Pinhead's a great character. The Cenobites, I can never get that right. They're interesting characters, but how often? They only come in the last 15 minutes of the movie. I mean, and then the other movies they made were just god awful after a point. I mean, they weren't even making movies about Hellraiser, they were just writing scripts and adding Pinhead in. This is one of those franchises, the reason it's so on the low on the list is, is just, I feel like it's one of the franchises that's been crapped on the most. I mean, literally, just put through the, the ringer. If anything needs a reboot, it's Hellraiser. Don't reboot the good stuff. Reboot the crappy stuff. Get it, Hollywood. Yeah. All right. 14. And this is another personal preference for me. It's a kid, I love this movie. I still watch it to the day. I even have the book. It's called Christine. Stephen King novel, and yes, there's variations, of course, from every Stephen King movie to the book, but I felt they did a great job on it. The effects are wonderful, and you, you just feel like Christine is just this evil, jealous bitch just out to run everyone over. A fantastic movie. It, it, gives you the, it gives you the idea of a tormented kid. Like It has a lot of tropes in it, a lot of those classic high, st high school tropes, but it does really well in delivering the violence, the action. I mean, there's a scene where the car gets beat up and then it brings itself back to life. The effects on that are just wonderful. It's worth the watch. And it was before CGI kind of started ruining everything. I mean, don't get me wrong, CGI has done a lot of good things, but some of their effects are just... Give me Tom Savini any day, if you know what I'm saying. Oh, if you guys know who that is. If you don't know who Tom Savini is, get on that little phone of yours, push some buttons, and look him up. Yeah. All right. Now, I'm here also to kick ass and chew bubble gum. And I'm all out of bubble gum. <laughs> I've always wanted to say that line on my show. They live. Roddy Piper. John Carpenter movie. It, <laughs> great movie. It's it's kind of like a, a sci-fi-ish horror movie. It's about a man who gets these sunglasses and sees that the world is being slowly taken over by these aliens. And it shows the world that really is a black and white. Like signs that says McDonald's says to consume, obey, breed, eat. And it, it, subliminally. And it's a very, very interesting movie. And I thought Piper did a fantastic job as John Nada. Yeah, they almost gave him Mexican's name, so I guess we could kind of count him in the family. I recommend it. One hell of a great fight scene. That's all I'm going to tell you because I want you to get up there and rent the movie. Now, Critters. 
if you've been watching my Twitter, I love the Critters movies. Even though, you know, DiCaprio first appeared in part three, but uh, I'm not the biggest. I'm going to go on a little tangent here. Early on in DiCaprio's career, I wasn't the biggest fan. When Titanic came out, I didn't watch his movies for eight years. Just saying that. Throwing that out there. But even though he's in this series, he it does not take away from these little, little bastards from outer space that just eat and eat and eat. With these little porcupine things that stun and kind of like freeze you and they munch you. This is a, like I said, it's one of those movies where it's really has that horror element to it, but it has that funny side to it too. Part two is pretty solid. Part three is eh, and part four is eh. But those two movies I highly recommend. And like I said, if you just want a fun time watching a good horror movie and have some laughs with it and not take itself too seriously, Critters is definitely, definitely recommend it. 86 flick, and that was a number 12. Now, 11... It's going to be a little hard to explain to you guys unless you've seen the series. Phantasm 2. Yeah, I had to use part 2. This is one of those incidents where part 1 came out in the 70s and another part came out in the 80s and the 90s. But they used a lot of the same actors. It's a multi-dimensional movie. It's, it would, I would have to have a whole show just to explain <laughs> these movies. They're, they're that crazy. <laughs> they're that crazy and that layered in a very odd way it's about these two people that are trying to stop this tall man that goes from dimension to dimension with these little balls with spikes that come out of them and drill into your head <laughs> and he steals humans and turns them into like little like dwarves to his slaves in his other dimension it, like i said you would have to watch the, all the movies uh they've kept a lot of the same actors it's been really interesting to watch them they're one of those ones you have to watch more than once but the payoff is interesting you do see stuff different stuff every time and they, they've tried to keep it more consistent than some of the other horror movies that's why unfortunately as an honorable mention I I love the puppet master movies but they are so far out of sync it's hard to mention a Pacific one but they're my honorable mention, the Puppet Master movies. I love these movies so much. I love, I, I know they're out of order. The storyline's kind of whacked out, but I just love the puppets. So my honorable mention is the Puppet Master movies. And if you just want something different, and the puppets are kind of like different every time. Sometimes they're good, sometimes they're bad. But they're definitely going to kill someone's ass. So it's worth seeing. That's my honorable mention. Who? Let's get to number ten. <laughs> oh, sorry, I, that deer. All right, number ten, Evil Dead Two. Yep, Evil Dead Two. Now I was almost tempted to put part one, but part two was the one that brought me into the series. I love the character of Ash. I love Ash versus Evil Dead, and I would just write to say right now that it needs a season four. Give us a season four. I will drop the ring on you, son. There you go. Great series. I love the character of Ash. I kind of like that he's this kind of deadbeat scumbag, beer-drinking scumbag, and he's the salvation of the world. It's <laughs> It just makes it that much better. In a world like this where all these, most of these people exist, like Freddy versus Jason versus Ash, great comic book, go out there and buy it. Buy it, buy it, buy it, buy it, buy it. Two parts. Badass. Ash makes kind of the perfect pro pro protagonist to go after Jason and Freddy. I mean, but man, he has a chainsaw hand. I mean, how much more awesome can you get than that? So if, you don't, if you're not down with that, then you could suck my boomstick, if you know what I'm saying. Now, moving on to number nine. Cronenberg, and I don't mean the fly. Eh. That'd be like number 21 or something like that on my list. The Thing. The Thing is an awesome, badassery movie. Now, the effects on it, all practical. I, Cronenberg is this master of making these horrible looking monsters that just come to life and you just believe they're going to come out there. And <laughs> well, anyways, it's, it's in a, a base. And I do believe... Um, 
one of the poles. And this alien is trapped with these humans and it can mimic them and take their shape. So you actually don't know who the alien is. So it has that paranoia element that I do love in a movie. Plus it has Kurt Russell in it. Kurt Russell's the man. Man. Now, moving on. One of the interesting movies on this list is Poltergeist because of the curse. I mean, so many people have died in connection to that movie. It is absolutely, positively freaky deaky. Movies about family moves in to a house and it was on a cemetery. Allegedly, they moved the bodies in the graves, but they just moved the graves. I mean, they just moved the tombstones and not the graves. And it was also buried under an Indian ground, and it creates this portal, and it kidnaps this little girl who starts talking to them through the television, and they have to bring her back from the dark dimension. And yes, I'm glossing over these because I know there's certain people out there that have seen them, but there's certain millennials that haven't. That's why I want you to go out and get the movie. Not the remake. Not the remake. The movie that actually came out in 1982. Alright? get that one. The, the remakes lately have just, well, frankly, sucked ass. I mean, like, you guys have got all these special effects, you got all this good stuff, and a lot of the remakes just suck ass. And I, don't, I don't know what to say. I mean, like, sometimes you get a lucky, you get a lucky shot, Ash and Evil Dead, for example, but other than that, alright, moving on. The Shining. Oh my god, Kubrick, Kubrick, Kubrick. Whew. I bet you're in heaven right now. Pissing off someone. Because you know he pissed Stephen King off with this movie. He took the movie and totally turned it upside down. Stephen King hates this movie, remake of his movie, but it's a classic. It's a psychological movie. The scares, like, people might see it as slow, but it's one of those movies you really have to watch. Kubrick is so detail-oriented. There's so many things that you catch and miss and catch and miss. There's actually a movie made about the movie. <laughs> I'm not kidding. Called Room 237. It's all the conspiracy Kubrick theories. An interesting movie, but even that aside from all the conspiracy theories it's just an awesome movie to watch and plus Jack Nicholson going he is Johnny it <laughs> gets me every time oh classic movie red rum red rum now moving on people consider this a sci-fi movie but I consider this a sci-fi for aliens and I didn't say alien I meant aliens the one that came out afterwards in 86 I love this movie. I love the fact that it there's more aliens, marines. I mean, people blowing shit up. A robot fighting a giant alien. I mean, a robot fighting a giant alien. I mean, there's a lot of killing in this. I mean, it has a little bit of everything. And plus the aliens just disappearing and reappearing. That whole radar scene. They're just wandering through. They're just waiting. And then out of nowhere. No. <laughs> Worth the watch. Worth the watch. Now, number five. Days of the Dead. Or Day of the Dead. Sorry. It's a 1985 movie. And uh, I thought this one was interesting. This one takes place in a missile silo. With some of the last survivors. And a scientist trying to teach the zombie how to be human named Bob. And it's interesting to watch Bob's progression as he does become kind of smarter and he does seem to get consciousness. And the death scenes in this are just awesome. People being ripped apart like a, like Hulk Hogan rips a t-shirt. Wonderful movie. Um, Romero, of course, uh, the king of zombie movies. Let's just call it what it is. The man's the king. period. Now, part four, or I mean number four. <laughs> um, I love these movies, and I know there's been a sucky movie in the mix, and someone else, some consider another movie sucky, which I liked. Child's Play. I love Chucky. 
<laughs> Chucky's my boy. I mean, I, I love part one. It was scary as hell. Part two was good. Some people kind of, eh, on part three, but I think it has its moments. I think it's different. I think that him and being in a military school is awesome. And then, of course, there's Bride of Chucky, which Brad Dwarf enjoyed, and so did I. I thought it was different, unique, funny. The, the addition of Tiffany was wonderful. And then they had to shite the bed. They had to shite it with Seed of Chucky. What can I say about that movie? Sucks. But anyways, the first movie's great. It's about a man, Charles Lee Ray, desperately a murderer trying to desperately escape the cops. Knows voodoo, passes his soul into a doll. And the doll can and he can only pass his essence onto the human that he told his secret to first. Hence the little boy that his mom buys the doll for. Great movie. Like I said, Part one, good. Part two, yes. Part three was pretty good. Bride, I thought was better. See, the new ones, as you guys have probably seen. If you haven't, go see them. Watch Chucky. Or Chucky will come for you in the middle of the night. And he will be your friend to the end. <laughs> but anyways, I digress. I digress. Now... Number three and number two. I, I had a hard time with these, but I put number three in, as number three because number three was just kind of a rip off of number two. <laughs> so, Friday the 13th. Now, I'm not too king on the Jason movies at first when I was, you know, I was always a Freddy fan. But over the years, they grew on me. This one was interesting, of course. Spoilers, if you haven't seen it. The killer is not Jason. That's all I'll say about that. And it's just that classic kill movie. You know, where, like, a lot of the trope kills came from. And plus, you get to see Kevin Bacon get murdered with an arrow. An arrow. So sweet. Highly recommend the movie. It kicks off the franchise. And it's interesting, especially the ending. The ending is the whole reason we have a franchise in the first place. Now, number two is Halloween 2. And yes, had to put the sequel on because the other one came out in the 70s. Now, Halloween 2 should have been the conclusion of Halloween. And it... Loomis coming back, trying to find Myers again, shooting him, like I said, like it was supposed to be the end. Because they made that crap movie, Season of the Witch. Which wasn't a bad movie, they just shouldn't have named it Halloween. I mean, that's like lame, making Leprechaun Part 6 and calling it Nightmare on Elm Street 9. This doesn't, doesn't work. Doesn't work. Obviously, this kicked off a lot of movies. I actually enjoy the Halloween movies a bit more than the Friday. Some, some of them. Part 4 was decent. 5 was... But, uh... Like I said, as they, a lot of these movies got older, it was kind of a diminished return. The remake with Rob Zombie was eh. But if you guys want a good time and you want to see the true master Carpenter do it, watch one and two. Now, number one. And I bet you guys are guessing what it is. Aren't you? Aren't you? You're thinking it's some kind of dream demon? Some guy that uses fear? Well, you'll be right. <laughs> but, I'm picking my favorite. It ain't Nightmare on Elm Street Part 1 like y'all are thinking. It's Part 3. Dream Warriors, baby. Yeah, yeah. Ah, now don't get me wrong. Part 1, all-time classic. I mean, I loved it. There's just certain things I didn't like about it. It was the Dream Warriors Part 3 that really got me into it. And I think the Dream Warriors had some of the best Freddy Krueger lines, like, Welcome to prime time, bitch! Like, some of that just classic Freddy. And plus, Robert Englund said that that was one of the movies that he had the most fun on, that he enjoyed making. Possibly his favorite. So, who am I to argue with the king of dreams and nightmares? Well, that is my top 20, including one honorable mention of 80s horror movies. If you agree, disagree, if there's any that I missed, drop a comment. 
let me know what's going on and if you got any suggestions let a demon know because I'll be surfing them airwaves spreading that fear all across the internet and again I like to give a shout out to my boys on Twitter thank you for the suggestion 12 nights of horror <laughs> my boys Hit me up sometime. This is Jack Slater, the Comic Outlaw, signing off. Yeah. Coming at you.